the bees use propolis, really sticky, waxy glue-like substance to close up any holes, or any cracks. And so over the course of the winter, sometimes it's kind of hard breaking that seal and getting in here. So under the cover, there's a top board. It's like the ants have found the hive. Let's see what's going on in the top. So I see in here comb that's been built out. These top boxes, if you're not a beekeeper, these top boxes are called supers. And the top supers are where the honey is stored. Generally, beekeepers go for two large boxes, which is the hive box or one large box, which is where the hive lives. And then the supers, they stack on top and that's where the honey is stored. But I'm not that strong to hold um, an entire full bottom box. And sometimes you gotta move your hives around a little bit. And so I opted to do two medium sized boxes for the hive so that I can divide them and move them if I need to and lift them. So all of my, all of my boxes are the same size and that's just for weight sake. That's just my kind of method. In the fall, these two bottom boxes were full and I was afraid of them not having enough room for their honey stores because this was a really big hive and it was really, it appeared to be really strong. So I gave them a super towards the end of the fall and generally I'll take these off and then break them down for winter. But they had started storing honey up here and so I went ahead and left it. I did the same thing with this hive because they both appeared really strong. And so I do see that they actually used a few of these frames. They built them out, but they didn't put honey in them. So you see a cluster of dead bees on this frame. This always makes me so sad when I come in here and they haven't survived. And then this frame has tons of honey. So you'll see that these areas, these capped areas, this is all honey in here and this is all honey. And the bees, you can just see them dead. It's such a tragic and sad, sad thing. There are theories that the um, pollen from genetically modified crops, like our soy and corn crops, and potentially wheat. They're doing some unregulated field trials in the Willamette Valley in Oregon with unapproved GMO wheat. So when this kind of stuff gets in the market and it gets into our cropland and the GM pollen is having an adverse effects on our pollinators and the tremendous amount of pesticides that we're using are doing the same thing and they're killing off our our beneficial insects we're in we're in trouble so I'll collect the comb and all the wax from these hives I'll collect the honey as well but I want to get into this middle box and see what's going on. So this is where the bees live. This is into their hive box. The neighbor bees are coming over to check it out. They will rob each other's hives, especially if one colony is weak and one is strong. So you see this, now they started doing some freestyle some freestyle um, comb build out in here and 
they it looks like they were putting comb on top of comb and it got really wavy usually it's really uniform I don't tend to them much so I just let them go for it and do their own thing they get creative so this whole entire thing is honey I'll harvest the honey and um, I'll make a video if you guys are interested it's a really messy kind of gruesome process um, I really don't enjoy it <laughs> but I like the result and I will um, melt down and process the wax so you can see what that process is like and to get all of this brown stuff and the dead bees and wings and legs and all of the detritus that's actually in here to get that all rendered out so you have just a beautiful clean chunk of yellow beeswax um, is a process in and of itself so I'll show you those in the colony everybody has their job that they do and there are scout bees that go out and look for flower and pollen in the early spring there are guard bees that protect the hive and so sometimes I'll just stand out here and every once in a while a bee will hit me like on the head or on the arm and they don't want to sting you they they don't want you there they don't know what you are they don't know if you're a predator and so I just got chased away by a guard bee but a lot of times the hives are really docile and they don't mind if you stand here as long as you're quiet and you don't make furtive moves you can just sit here and watch them come and go and all of their little pollen baskets are full I just saw a blue one and yellow and orange and white it's really remarkable these early days it's not very warm out and these guys are just going for it they've been in there all winter long and you can see in front of the hive right here there must be 2,000 dead bees so bees they don't they don't have a very long lifespan so the old ones that die during the winter get shepherded out and tossed out the door there's there's a dead one right on the um, on the patio and they'll eventually haul them out and so they drop them all right here in front of the hive So that now that we know that our pesticides and our herbicides and Roundup and all of the things that we spray around in our gardens to keep our grass green or to kill a weed is also killing our pollinators. It's making our environment a toxic place. So to your part and really think about your use of toxic chemicals and pesticides and whether or not it's really necessary. Because these guys are struggling they're struggling for survival and you know it's it's up to us we know better we know what's killing them and yet we still do it so it's up to us to choose wisely they're telling me it's time to go Are their stingers all dried up or not possible?